welcome back to the Allegheny Northern in N Scale, and it is Sunday afternoon, uh, but a day late on uh, issuing a video for the week. So I there's a reason for that, and it is model train related, and it's going to be a big update in the February layout update. But that's not what we're talking about today. We are talking about the newest pickup here to the Allegheny Northern, and. It was an impulse buy, I will admit, but you guys have probably heard me talk in the past about the Jacksonville Terminal. Uh, I think I had, they were well cars that I, that I purchased. And I did a review on them. It's got to be a year or two back. And now I am bringing you a review on the Jacksonville Terminal Company. This is their uh, 60 foot VTTX flat car and that is made by Pullman Standard. So this is the latest iteration of the Pullman Standard standard 60 foot flat car. And uh, rather than being in general service, this was put into uh, container service. And if you are in N scale and you have not seen Jacksonville Terminals containers, which we will be using here shortly they are some of the best if not the best containers on the market available for n scale and i think their quality and level of detail is rivaled right now probably only by scale trains and scale trains although they have a nice selection like you know their auto racks and they've got some box cars and some hopper cars um, and those steel coil cars that came out recently their offerings in N scale are well increasing or not, you know, as vast as some of the other like micro trains, but uh, same deal here with Jacksonville Terminal Company, a relatively new company. They're coming up with more and more stuff that seems to pretty much all be related to the intermodal industry. And since I have two intermodal yards, that's just fine with me. So let's take a look at what you get in the box. Okay, first off, if you still have yours in the box, you get the standard jewel case, uh, which is which is nice and is a good, good thing because uh, mine took a spill down the steps on the way down. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. It was uh, it was not not cool, but nothing happened. Not even the lid came off the case. So that's pretty, uh, you can see why they package them this way. Inside, you will find that there is not only your car, uh, but there are some extra pieces. Those are right here, right there. And an exploded diagram of the car, which you might think, well, that's kind of odd. Usually you get those just with locomotives. Uh, and it is, but it shows you all the features of the car. So uh, I have two here, obviously. Uh, one is weathered and one is not weathered. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, the weathering is, uh, is subtle. So I wouldn't, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna weather these cars, you're probably gonna have to add a little bit more to it. And basically, their weathered version is just slightly darker than their unweathered version. I think you can see that there in the video. So there you are. Weathered versus unweathered. So, now, let's talk a little bit about some of the features on the car. Okay, so one of the interesting features that I'd like to point out on this car, and I'm going to try and get close enough here that you can see it without it blurring, is the trucks. They are making their own trucks, or having them made for them, and their own two-scale couplers. And the detail on them is is pretty good and I always get a little bit nervous when I see somebody doing something that's not micro trains or something that I'm familiar with because I wonder hmm how is that going to uh, how's that going to interact and I brought out the test gauge here just to see if the cars were in scale and uh, I'm not too worried about them working with micro trains because as you can see it couples right up to it and there's no sense in checking the uh, trip pin because there is no trip pin. So for those of you who like to cut the pins off, they've already done it for you. 
there is a small piece in there just to hold it in place, but it's not uh, it's not a full trip pin. So if you were someone who was using magnetic uncoupling, that might be a problem for you. But for most of us who do not, um, no big deal. And as you can see, they do couple nice and clean to each other. Actually, they look pretty good with a little bit of weather and really bring out that detail. And then I want to take you down here on the actual car itself. And I know that it's having some trouble focusing on some of that smaller print. But it is there and it is legible. And it's not as blurry as it looks on the on the camera. I'll see if I can pull it back here just a little bit to let you see that. Now, I did mention that there are some extra parts in an exploded diagram, and the reason that's important is you can change this piece out right here, and you can make it so that it is fit for, let's say, two 20-foot containers. And the piece just presses in here, um, and then it's equipped for two 20-foot uh, containers. And we just happen to have some Jacksonville Terminal Company containers. Let's put it on the cars and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've got the car set up for the uh, container configuration for two 20-foot containers. And they have a pretty snug fit in here, which is really nice because it's sometimes the uh, if you've got a trailer on a flat car or a uh, container on a flat car, sometimes they like to move around here. But this is actually in here well enough that I can pick it up uh, by the container. And uh, that's not to say that these cars are too light. They're actually weighted uh, so that they, they track well. But the clips that hold them in place are pretty pretty solid. So this is what it would look like if you were running two 20-foot uh, box car uh, or container cars on here in your motor cars. Uh, let me show you uh, two different sizes here. And this is where we're going to get into some of the uh, extra pieces. So if you had a large... And I'm just going to uh, pull the uh, middle piece off here so that we can, and of course on the weathered one it came off a little bit easier, or the unweathered one, but uh, if you were running a larger container, you would take your flat piece here and you would set that in, and your larger container. And these containers that I'm showing you are all Jacksonville Terminal Company trail, uh, containers. I'm not uh, not mixing and matching here. Just to uh, keep it in the family, so to speak. And so if you had your container riding something like this, then you could, by virtue of that flat piece, uh, your container would... And I realize I don't have that nestled all the way in there, but uh, your your flat piece here would let that container ride to the edge of the trailer. And if you were going just a little bit shorter, you would still have that piece in there, and your container would just nestle right into that piece right there. And that would allow you to you know, run some different size containers. So it's kind of cool that they give you those extra pieces um, so that you can change out your car and what you're, um, what you're hauling there. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat. Okay, let's go ahead and finish taking a look at the details here. So on the underside, you can see through the open deck and you've got your typical brake details and coming around here, you can see you've got your typical grabs and rungs. You've got some nice brake hose detail here on the end, so your, your airline hose. And then we already kind of took a look at some of the uh, details as far as... Yeah, I could tell it was not uh, sitting right on the train on the track there, so... And, of course, it's lettered for TTX, actually VTTX, and these cars do sit nice and low, just like the prototype. 
which is kind of cool when you see the truck kind of half buried there under the car. But the detail on them is very, very nice. And although it says that they are weighted, and they do have a little bit of weight to them, um, they're pretty light cars. So um, let's go ahead and put them on the track and let's see how they roll. Okay, so uh, I was letting you guys kind of watch what was happening here in the video, and I want to make some observations here about the car and its performance. Um, first of all, uh, the performance was a little little sketch, um, and what I noticed, uh, these wheels on here in the wheel set is definitely, definitely a custom deal. I don't recognize it at all. Very fine parts. Uh, metal wheels with the low-profile uh, realistic wheels. I know you, some of you guys like um, and uh, they are insulated on one side so if you're one of those goofballs that has to add resistors for block detection uh, the wheel set on here will let you do that um, however it is severely limited in how much it can turn see see how see how tight it is um, so it does not give you a whole lot of radius and that's actually causing me problems here even though, even though I don't have a real tight radius on this curve uh, this car does not like this 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 radius here and that is a uh, I think that's a 13 inch radius um, you know so so 20 26 um, diameter and it uh, I can feel it binding when it gets right to about here uh, the wheels just don't turn uh, enough to let it you know it kind of it kind of rubs against the car and so when it gets to about here um, it, it's it's almost like it's it's bound uh, inside so it it sort of doesn't want to ride real well um, you can see it stops right there um, when it's coming down the grade because that's where that's where that's where it catches um, so I, I thought maybe it was um, trying to string line but it's actually not string lining uh, because you do have body mount couplers on here so what was going on is those those wheels are touching the car um, and they're adding a whole lot of resistance. So when you saw it stall here, you know that that uh, that's that's why. Um, I, I'm not not sure that that's uh, not sure that that's a realistic uh, detail that I that I would want. At least not one in my model uh, because you know there's not too many railroads. At least not too many models that that aren't uh, running. You know somewhere around a 13. Or less radius, you know, especially if you've got any kind of you know space constraints. And so I'm just watching here, you know, as the as the train is pushing it, and you can see where it's kind of bouncing and you know flipping around here. Um, you know, and it, it's like it's getting bound, and, and the locomotives are actually pushing against it, which you know you can see how the cars are shaking and rattling. And that's not a that's not a joint they're getting caught on, which is what I thought was originally. It's actually because the car is binding underneath. So, you know, that's a huge problem. Now, this is the Jacksonville Terminal Company car, uh, the well car that I that I have. And uh, 
you know, when I when I when I look at this one here, you know, this is a standard Microtrains truck. That's Microtrains couplers, and this guy has, you know, it's a long it's a longer car, and he does not have any issues, uh, you know. Here, I mean, he see you can see he just wants to roll right through that curve, um, but these cars these cars do not. So you know that is that that's a problem. I'm going to take a look at the underside of the car to see if there's, uh, and of course now it doesn't want a couple again. There we go. Uh, you know, see if there's anything that uh, I can do about that. But that is the, I mean, that is the bulk of the car right there, and there's not a whole lot to it. So I don't know what what else you could do there to make that make that work, but. That's uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be a problem. So um, beware uh, if you purchase this this car, you've got to have some pretty broad uh, turns, or this thing is is just not gonna it's not gonna do it. So uh, like I said, that's uh, that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of a major negative. Okay, so what I wanted you to see there was how the microtrains trucks just sort of roll right through that on on the tighter radius, and this guy just—I mean, he, he'll go right, like he can he can be pulled through this, um, but it's adding resistance right right where the the main part of the curve is, right right at the you know, the apex of that radius, and it just it just stops. Um, and like I said, I can, I can pull it through it. So if you were, if this was in a train, uh, it would ride right through that. But if you've got a bunch of weight or you're going uphill or through a curve, like my layout does, um, this car is not going to track well folks. Um, so, so be careful with that. Okay. So kind of putzing around here with the car and trying to figure out what might be the issue. And you're zoomed in here. Any idea what the issue might be? Yeah, it's that little air hose. So, uh, extra fine detail, looks really sweet, but look on this curve where it is. Yep, it's right on the rail. So, doing a couple of quick tests, and although that is plastic and it's got some flexibility to it, it it's pretty rigid. And so I said, hmm, I wonder if this is causing me some grief. And lo and behold, notice how the car is not jumping at the turnout anymore? Yeah, how about that? Now wait a minute, let me show you going through the curve. Huh. Running smooth again, isn't it? Okay, well that's interesting. Now, just for shits and giggles, let's do this. Let's uh let's go ahead and take the rest of our train. Huh. Well, looks to me like the problem has been fixed. Okay, so the uh, the radius is still tight, but it looks like the train can get through it if it's also not dealing with the air hoses. Now, let's do something here a little bit ridiculous. Let's uh, let's free roll the car down the hill. Now I'm going to be honest with you because I feel honesty is important in this relationship that we have here. Uh, I was going to give these cars a pretty bad review uh, because although I liked them and I thought they were really cool doesn't do me any damn good if I can't actually run them. 
And so, if I take this, and I disconnect it from my locomotives, and now I just want to get it, get it rolling there. Huh, rolled right through it. So, um, I can tell you that there is less resistance uh, on the car now in the, in, the, in the curve. I can feel it, um, but it is still tight. So, um, you know, although this is a little bit freer rolling, um, it seemed like those little air hoses were my main problem. So, you've got a couple of options here to make that work. Uh, the first thing you can do is you could pull them off. They just, they just clip right into the, into the bottom there. It's not focusing. They just clip right into the bottom, and they're not even glued in. So, you can, you can peel them off. If you want to do what I did and bend them back a little bit, hold them right here, right where my uh, thumb is at, and then bend them back, and they will stay out of the way. So uh, that, that makes this car actually, actually function. So the radius item that we're worried about here, um, just so you know, it still, it still might be an issue for you um, because, like I said, this is about a, I think it's about a 13-inch radius here. And it's sort of, it's sort of still rubbing. I can feel it rubbing a little bit, um, but not enough that it's impeding the train's movement, and it's rolling through there. So I, I would, I would almost say that's a non-issue. Uh, but if you had something tight, like a nine and three quarter inch radius, uh, I don't know how well this car would do. Uh, I don't have anything that tight to show you, but uh, just keep that in mind. So. In any event, uh, definitely got a different view uh, on these cars now that I've uh, been able to make, get them to go around the uh, around the corner. So looks the looks were always awesome. The car looks cool. Uh, if you're running intermodal trains, you know this is a nice addition, especially with their containers, which uh, I really like their containers. And if you uh, if you bend those hoses to to <laughs> ride over your rails, yeah, now they don't work too bad. So uh, performance is not bad. Just be careful. They they obviously need a, a broad radius there, but in general, um, now that I can can run these in a train, uh, I can give them a little bit better review than I had previously. So that is the Jacksonville Terminal Company's 60 foot Pullman Standard VTTX intermodal car, container car, and it is. They are nice cars. Um, a little, little rough there on the start of the performance, uh, but uh, they are nice cars. $39.99 is what they're going to cost you, plus Uncle Sam, shipping, all that good stuff. So they, they do have a little bit of a price tag. There are several road numbers supposedly going to be offered. Uh, I was able to pick up two of them, one weathered and one unweathered, to show you. So there you have it.